Hi everyone, this is Will at Undo Media. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to add a groovy bass shake effect like this to your tracks in Adobe Premiere Pro. Alrighty, here we are again in Adobe Premiere Pro 2020. I've already set up a sequence with a video clip here on the timeline and a funky little music track to go with it. What we're going to do here is add some bass shake effects to this scene. The first thing I want to do is add some markers on the timeline at each of the heavy bass beats. I'm going to zoom in and enlarge that audio track, and in the audio waveform you can actually see each of these peaks where the bass hits. I'll just move the playhead over to the beginning of the first of those bass hits and click M on the keyboard to add a marker. Then I'll continue through the rest of the timeline and add markers at every bass beat. Now you don't have to do this if you're only adding one bass shake, but for this tutorial I'm going to add a whole bunch, and adding markers will help me navigate around a bit quicker later on. And once I'm done adding my markers, I'm ready to begin creating my first shake effect. I'm going to start at this frame since there's a little more going on here visually and you'll get a better sense of what we're doing. We're going to use an adjustment layer for this effect, so I'll come over and click the new item icon and select adjustment layer. I'll check the dialog box that opens just to make sure the settings match my sequence, click OK and drag that new adjustment layer over onto the timeline. We'll be adding an effect to this layer. I'll open up the effects panel and search for directional blur, which can be found within video effects, blur and sharpen, directional blur. Then we'll drag that effect over onto our adjustment layer, and up in the effect controls panel, there's our directional blur effect. I'll increase the blur length to say 50, and over in the program monitor, you can see that's added some blur to the clip below. You can play around with this blur length depending on your footage and how extreme you want your shake effect to be. I want a subtle bass bounce for this scene, so I'll keep this at 50. But this is a 4K clip. If it was 1080p, I'd probably go half that number. And if you haven't used the directional blur effect before, you can also change the direction of the blur. But for the effect we're creating here, zero is what we want, which is a straight up and down or vertical blur. So next, we'll come back down to the timeline, click C on the keyboard for the razor tool, and add a dozen or so single frame cuts to this adjustment layer. Then click V on the keyboard for the selection tool, and delete every second frame. I'm going to add one more cut here, and then just get rid of the rest. I'll back up a little and play that section through so you can see what we've got. A pretty slick little bass bounce effect. Now, similar to how you could adjust the intensity of the shake by changing the blur length, you can change the shake duration by adding or removing some of these adjustment layer frames. I could delete these last three frames, for example, for a slightly different effect. It all depends on the look you're going for, of course, but somewhere between three and six frames tends to work best. So this already looks great, but there's an easy way to make this shake effect look even more realistic. In the audio, you can see how the bass spikes and then trails off over time, and we can match that decrease in amplitude in our video. So the first bounce will be the strongest, and then diminish over the next few frames. All we need to do is select the second adjustment layer slice, and then decrease the blur length slightly. I'll lower that from 50 to 45 for this one. Then I'll lower each subsequent frame to 5 less than the previous. Once I'm done, the blur length on my six frames will go from 50 down to 25 in increments of 5. And of course how quickly you decrease the blur length on each frame depends on how fast you want your bass shake to trail off. So it's not a huge difference, but it's little details like this that'll make your edits stand out. Now I can just select all of those adjustment layer frames, which make up one bass shake, right click, choose group and then copy that group by dragging and holding down the Option key on a Mac, Alt on a PC, everywhere I want a bass shake to occur on my timeline. I'll play back a section of this so you can see what we have so far, but don't go anywhere yet. There's a minor gotcha with the directional blur effect, at least as of this release, which is Premiere Pro 2020. I'll show you what that is, and a couple ways to fix it. If I move over to one of these blurred frames, you'll see that adding directional blur creates kind of a inner shadow effect near the edges of the frame. It's barely perceptible when viewed at normal speed, but it is there. You can just ignore it, and most people will never notice it. But if you're obsessively picky like me, there are a few ways around this. One way would be to use the Gaussian blur effect rather than the directional blur. 
I'm going to turn off the directional blur in this frame for now, and then search for Gaussian Blur in my effects panel, which can also be found in Video Effects, Blur and Sharpen, Gaussian Blur, and drag that effect onto my clip. So instead of using a directional blur, we'll use a Gaussian Blur. Now, this effect calculates values differently, so to get a similar result, I need a higher number here in the blurriness parameter. And what you'll probably notice right away is that we still have that inner shadow thing going on here. But the Gaussian Blur has a checkbox for repeat edge pixels. And if I check that box, presto, no more inner shadow. I'll set the direction of this blur to vertical only, and we now have pretty much the same effect as the directional blur. Now, this wouldn't work for anything other than a perfectly horizontal or vertical blur, unlike the directional blur, which will allow us to add blur in any direction. The directional blur is definitely more flexible than the Gaussian blur. I also think it looks just slightly better. And I strongly suspect that Adobe will add that little repeat edge pixels checkbox to the directional blur effect as well in the near future. So for now, if you prefer to use the directional blur, but don't want that shadow thing happening, the easy fix is to duplicate your video clip by just dragging it up a track while holding down the Alt or Option key, select that duplicated clip and all the adjustment layers with our effect, right click, and select Nest, which will combine our copied clip and effects into a nested sequence, and get rid of the shadow business we had before around the edges of our video. Just so you can see how that works, I'll hide the bottom track for a second, and there's that shadow again. Basically, the directional blur effect is fading towards transparent at the edges. So having a copy of the same clip on a track below with no effects on it fills in those areas. Now, if you've actually watched this far, I know what you're thinking. A track like this deserves more than the usual sign-off. It needs a little something extra. I give you 1970s era late night DJ. All right, all you chill cats out there. This is your Uncle Will signing off for the night. Don't forget to give us a like and hit that subscribe button. Catch you on the flip side.